Okay, here's a new tutorial. I uh, found it. Uh, I've tried to change it a little bit because it doesn't work out exactly as it should do. So I've altered some of the settings and everything to make it look a little bit better. But basically I'm going to do this in stages as well because it's quite a complicated uh, tutorial. Um, so I'm going to take it in pieces. It's basically how to make a 3D book in Illustrator. It's a very nice tutorial and you can get a great result out of it as well. So basically I'm going to go through it step by step. Uh, I'm going to start off with the lower parts of the book first and then we're going to go into the uh, inside pages with the folds and everything uh, in the next tutorial. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to start off with a new document, like so. What I'm going to do is first is I'm going to change the colours. I'm going to get rid of the uh, get rid of the stroke for now. I'm just going to choose a red. I'm going to make a red book, so I'm going to choose this red, okay. And then from that point, I'm going to make a rectangle, like so. Keep it quite thin, okay. This is the spine of the book and the cover. And what you should have is something in the region of six millimeters and four hundred millimeters long. It's not thousand four hundred meters long, like so. Okay, that is the spine of your book. What we're going to do now is to create an ellipse. Remember, if you want to keep it so it's a perfect ellipse, you simply hold down your shift key and do this. Okay, don't make it too big. Like right, so. Now what I'm going to do is just place that next to this, select both of them, and on this panel here you can actually then align them so they're exactly centred in that point there. I'll just zoom in for a second <coughs> to show you what we're going to do next. Simply deselect the main colour, so it's, oops, make sure you only select the uh, ellipse, okay, and then choose it as the stroke colour. As you can see, what we've got to try and do is make the stroke as big as the thickness there. Okay, so what we have to do is just keep adding. I'm going to make it go on the outside as well. Just keep adding it until it looks roughly the same thickness as the book. So it's about 16 pixels. Okay, so once we've done that, we then have to go to Object, Expand Appearance. That basically turns it from a uh, vector uh, stroke into an actual object like so okay now we've got to obviously get rid of parts of this because it's got to look like a, a book bottom where the uh, spine goes so I'm going to select both of them open up my uh, pathfinder options and choose the first one which is divide and that cuts all these elements that cuts across each other into bits now what we can do is select the ones we don't want like that and basically delete them. Yeah, just need to check on my uh, group file on my path. You notice here, for instance, you've got two invisible things that you don't need as well. So I'm going to get rid of those. I'm just going to check to see if there's anything else we don't need. We do need that. We do need that. 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 And that. Okay, so we've got all the objects as we should have them now. So I'm going to reselect them, that's all of them selected, we're going to go back to this Pathfinder option again. And there's a new, another button here, up at the top, it says Unite. Basically all it does is it actually clicks it so you can then add all the different elements together. So it's one solid object. You can, I'll just tell you, I'll just go back, you can if you want to as well. On the Pathfinder option, it's also you press Merge, which does the same, same, uh, same function. Okay. Anyway, what we have, if I zoom out now, is the base of our book. All right. So what we have to do is to round the corners a little bit. So the way we do this, we go to Effect, Stylize, Rounded Corners, just there. Okay. Press Preview on. Maybe you want to zoom in on this. Oh, let's cancel it. I'm just going to zoom in on here so we can actually see the effect it's going to do. Put the preview on. Okay. I'm going to put it up to three or something. Nothing's going to happen yet. Three. You see, what it's doing is rounding the corners. That's a bit too much, probably. So we'll make it two. Probably a bit less than that. 1.5. Try that. Yeah, that'll do it for me. OK, press OK. Zoom out. What you'll notice is it's also done this here. Yeah, which is not the way we want it because it looks a little bit deformed. OK. So what we can do 
just to make it look a little bit better is to click on points here and here and I'll just expand it out to help make the shape a little bit better that's probably not very good ok so it just helps improve the shape of the, the book right. so we'll just zoom out again there you go, there's your spine of your book next option we have to do is to go to um, object envelope, this envelope distort, ok and then what we'll have to do is just uh, make with the warp ok, what this is going to do is allow you to bend it slightly again I'm just going to put the preview on and so it does that to start with which is a bit, <laughs> a bit extreme for a, a book ok, but if we just press it to 1 click on the uh, option again, you'll notice it's got a slight curve Yeah, actually we could probably make it a little bit deeper than that by two, yeah. So it looks like the book's edges are going towards the uh, ground. Okay. Once you're happy with your distortion, let's just try three actually. Like so. Yeah. It gives a nice enough of a bend. Yeah, to look like a, a book sitting on the ground. Press OK. And there's your warp. Okay. And what we have to do now is to make it look more three-dimensional. So you go to Effect 3D extrude and bevel. Okay. Now what happens is you get this little option box up. I'll see if I can move this out of the way so we can see what's going to happen. Okay. You notice you can, if you wanted to, is move this around by hand. If I put a preview on, you can see it's made a big of a mess. So what we've done is I've speed up time. I've used the ones that they've put inside the actual tutorial that I've been following. So I'm going to just type those in. It's basically 35, 31, minus 10. And you suspect it. You notice that's in a kind of a flat position, but you notice the depth of it's not very good at the moment. Okay, we just need to make it look like it's not isometric. This is isometric at the moment. So the way you stop it making it look uh, isometric is you put a perspective in, but you notice what's happened here. This is the big problem you're going to face. Okay, is it actually distorts it. Yeah which is not what you want ok, so you want to make it a little bit less and I'll figure it out, it's around about 82 let me see that's still too much you're going to have to do this until it looks right let's go down to something like 30, see what that looks like mm, still not good let's try 50 ok, that's roughly ok so now what we're going to do is extend it it says in the tutorial 5 400, yeah, what you'll notice there is again it's not, yeah, it's not long enough, it's like a landscape book instead of a portrait book, so what we can do is extrude this a little bit more, so I'm going to do double that and see what happens, there you go, that's more like a real book, yeah, what you need to do, and this is a very careful thing to understand, is to copy all these down, so I'm just going to write these down whilst I'm looking, so I don't get this wrong, we're going to have to reduplicate these. Okay, so I've copied those down. And now I'm going to press OK now. Okay, so what we've done is we've made the actual base of the book. Okay, if you want to, we can create a little uh, depth shadow underneath it, so like it's sitting on the ground. And the way we do this is we open up our file and in the layers folder and duplicate it. Okay, select the bottom one. All right, and simply expand it, go to object, expand appearance and that does this Okay, it makes it into an actual object instead of an extrusion All right. based on that we then go again to this option where we make it all into one shape ok like so maybe you have to press it twice to get rid of all the little iggly bits that get left over now we're just going to make it black because that's the colour of a shadow ok once you've done the black, you just uh, go to effect. You can't see it because it's sitting underneath the book, so don't worry, but it'll appear in a minute. We'll just go to Gaussian Blur, like so. What we have to do with this Gaussian Blur once it's kicked. Like so, it's a, give it quite a high Gaussian Blur. I think it's roughly around... 
amount of it's about 33 yeah once you're happy with that you press OK that will then blur your object which will make it a little bit more visible underneath your book if I just deselect it Some things you have to wait for. <laughs> right, like so, you'll also notice that it's given the blur, there's a uh, even spacing around the entire book. You don't want that, so I'm going to just nip to my uh, nip to my uh, layers palette, select the, the um, shadow if I don't have it already selected, and just move it so it goes down, so you don't see the actual shadow at the top edges. It's actually sitting underneath. Like so underneath your book. Okay. Also, you need to set that for something like 70% in your opacity palette. Okay. That's the base of your book. Most uh, books, whilst it's re-rendering the Gaussian blur, most books have a, a sheet over the top of the spine and the cover that just binds the two things together. It's usually wrapped around the page on the first page. What we're going to do is recreate this now. Okay. The way we do this, just make a line. Just click and then hold shift down and click again across the other side. Like so. And then once you've done that, make sure that it's around about 400 millimeters wide. Okay, because then it's got to stretch right across here. Okay. Also, give it a stroke of one pixel. Okay, make sure it's a light grey. Oh no, actually, I'm going to make it a light blue. Give it a nice. Uh, get rid of your stroke as well. I mean, your fill. So once we've got the stroke colour, I'm going to make it a little bit slightly different. Uh, extreme blue, like so. Okay. So we've got a basic uh, stroke of one, and it's light blue. Now again, what we've got to do is go to this object uh, envelope distort, make with warp. And what we've got to do is give it the same value as we had on before, but this time though, on the horizontal distortion, we've also got to give it a 45 distortion. Okay, that just gives it a little slight bend at the right places, like so. Okay. Once we've done this, we go back to our 3D extrude and bevel, and we have to then place in ex the exact same coordinates as we did before. That's why it's good to remember them, or at least write them down. So again, it's minus 35, 31, minus 10, uh, 50, and 800. This time, though, you should probably think about setting the inside panel less than 800 because it's not going to be the same size as the book okay so what we're going to do is I'm going to make it 780 like so just a little bit shorter okay press OK if for some reason you find that the colour is a little bit too strong what we can do is oops you have to add a little bit extra lighting on this actually so I'm going back to the where it says more options Go back to the preview, and here all we need to do is just select two new lights, and just place them up the top and to the side, like so. Okay, and just bleaches it out a little bit, okay, to make it look a little bit better. If again you still don't like the colour, we can adjust it based on these uh, variables. Make sure we select that first. You can either make it darker or, or lighter, that's nice. Like that, okay. That's all preference though. And then we just grab it and move it down so it's fitting in roughly the same location as the edge of this book. We can start using the arrow keys eventually. I'm going to judge it by this bottom left corner, right corner, so it's in the right place. You notice know, it's too long now, so I've got to readjust the size of it, like so. And then just remove it down. 
problem is when you do resize it, it adjusts the, all the the variables associated with the uh, the bevel as well. So you, you may have to just tweak it a little bit like that. That's looking good. Okay, that's your base and your lower portions of your book. Now I've got to make the pages. So we'll go back to making a line. Simply, this is quite fun now. Make a new line. And so click on it. Make sure that the width of it's about 200 pixels. Like so. And instead, we give it a 0.5 because the paper is quite thin. Okay, 0.5. And then this time, we make it a, a grey colour. We make it grey instead of white because these are pages that are going to be underneath the top pages, and so the, hence they're going to be uh, slightly dark because of the lighting. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in on this section so we can see what we're doing. Like so. Okay. Now what we're going to do is duplicate these. So, depending on how many pages you want as well, I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, let's nice see. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bit darker whilst I'm doing all this function because I need to see what I'm doing. You know, it's very hard to see the lines when you've got a bright colour. Okay, so now what you notice is they may all be in the wrong position because they're not all aligned properly so what we can do is here we can just vertically distribute them correctly but they may not be lined up on the edges either so I'm just going to make everything lined okay and once you've done this you can then press group okay zoom out slightly and all I'm going to do is just drag that across like so, so we've got a copy because obviously you're doing two sides of the book but also you need to make sure that these two in the middle, like so. Okay, I'm going to select them both again. I'm going to change the colour back to the lighter grey that we talked about before. Okay, and then we have the pages, but obviously they don't look very good as pages because pages bend a little bit and everything. So I'm going to select the first group on your left. Now, if you press your E button, you get this transform tool here, free transform. If you go to this corner and then press down your command key, it allows you to just skew it, basically, so you can pull the bottom corners to one point like that, and so it looks more like a bent book. Okay. Now, if you do the same again with the other one, go to this tool again. Let's click on the menu so you know where it is. Okay. Start dragging, then press your command key down, and then your shift. It allows you to then align everything. Exactly, like so. And you've got two pages coming out. So you can see that. Basically, yeah, there you go. So they look like pages. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is to make them look a little bit more interesting. Okay. You also notice sometimes that pages bend on the edges. This is one thing that's different on my tutorial. So what I'm going to do is do that free transform again. Uh, make sure I select just one of the boxes at a time. Free transform, click, drag, and then grab, and that just pulls this in from the right slightly. Okay, and if we just move across the other side, and so select the other one again, so transform tool, start dragging, then hold down, just pull it in so it looks a little bit different from the straight edge. And there we have it, the pages necessary to make a book. What you need to do now then, is once you've done all this skewing and changing and twisting and everything, is to do the uh, do the extrusion, so make it look like an actual book. But before we do this, they're still straight. One thing we can do is if we go to Effect, sorry, the uh, Warp tool, which is this tool here, next to the uh, Distortion tool, what we can do is just move this along the line a little bit and it, what it does is it just deforms the straight lines enough to make them look like crumpled pe pages or something you don't want to do it too much <coughs> excuse me there you go okay but you still notice we've still got to make some changes but we'll do this after the extrusion okay so what I'm going to do is I've got it all selected okay and I'm going to go back to the 3D extrusion again using the same input as we did before, oops, cancel, make sure 
on the layers palette you make sure you get both those and group them okay else it does them as separate objects all right turn that round minus 35 31 minus 10 okay we're going to do 50 on the perspective again we're going to put the other variable in that we did for the blue light blue instead of the uh, dark blue okay and we're going to put 780 okay for the length of the pages okay press ok that should then put your pages looking like uh, pages of a book I'm just going to move them down try and get them in the right place this is when the rendering starts getting a bit funny but I, what I'm going to try and do again is I'm going to try and sit them in this bottom right corner first so I can judge it how much I've got to distort the other parts of the book to get them to fit properly and so you've got to figure out that the spine's got to be in that part of the book as well. Okay, so that's everything. What you may notice is that, you know, they've got unnatural curves. You wouldn't have a book like this and this is not in the right place. What we can do is click on certain aspects of the lines we just created. Wait until they look updates slightly. And you'll see that it does certain things, like it changes the uh, depths of the... Uh, positions of the book. All right. I'm not going to do that to all of them, I'm going to do that whilst we're off camera before the next stage. Okay. But you can see you can alter this until it looks really nice and uh, detailed. What we do need to do next though is to give a shadow underneath. We're going to do exactly the same function we did with the shadow for the book. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Select the one underneath, okay, like so. Go to expand appearance, so it's just one solid object. Then go to my uh, Pathfinder options, add to shape, like we did before. Make it black again, like so. What we're going to do now is to uh, blur it again. So I'm going to make it a little bit less than the uh, original one. I'm going to make it around about 8 or 9. Because you don't want an extreme blur on the shape. And again, we've got to move it down slightly. It's going to render out the, the blur. So, so we'll just move it into the right position. What we have to do now, because if I click off it, you'll notice it's got shaping here as well, and you want the blur only to be affecting on top of the uh, the book. So we're going to select this, go to our opacity, and look at some of the other options. Unfortunately, the problem is when you have girls in blurs associated with uh, these patterns, as it takes time for them to render, you also need to change this to 70 again. Okay. 
What you'll notice is it's got a little shape around your object. Okay, the blur wasn't as much as I thought it was going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in so I can see the blur. As I said, the original tutorial was using points, now I'm using pixels, so we have to affect the difference accordingly. So once we've done that, one final thing, we'll be ready for the next stage, which will be the tutorial following this, actually making the interesting pages with the objects on them. Okay, so zoom out. Don't worry about all this uh, edging here, we can clean all this up later. Just got to get the actual effect on the book looking correct. Okay, so now we're going to reselect the top group, duplicate that on top of it. This is the final thing we're going to have to do. And select overlay on top of that. What this should do, it should bleach out the pages a little bit, like so, so it looks more like real pages instead of uh, darker pages that we had before. Okay, You don't need to worry about too much about the uh, geometry involved in this because we can alter this via these, so these are just these little handles here. Okay, We can change those later and curve them and everything. But as you can see, if I just let go, that's not too bad as far as it goes for a uh, semi-realistic looking book but we obviously need the more interesting pages adding to it later we'll do that in a later tutorial okay